all rise. Department one of the Superior Court is now in session. Judge Carter presiding. We are here today to look at case 5734, the death of Ramona McMillan on November 15, 1924. Before we begin, will the clerk please swear in the jury. Do each of you swear that you will fairly try the court, this case, before this court, and that you will return a true verdict according to the evidence and the instructions of the court, so help you God. Please say, I do. I do. I do. You may be seated. Your Honor and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are here to reopen the case of Ramona McMillan. After the fire that took place on November 15th at the Moonshine Cafe, a body believed to be Miss McMillan was discovered underneath the rubble. Previously, the court had decided that the cause of death was smoke inhalation. However, new evidence has been found and we will need to reevaluate our suspects. I'm sorry, did you say Ramona McMillan, the singer? God, she's my favorite singer. Well, I suppose she was my favorite singer. God, she had the most beautiful voice. Is this going to be a conflict of interest, Your Honor? What? Absolutely not. But rest assured, we will find justice today for Ramona. Uh, Miss McMillan. Walter Dav Davis, Gloria Weston, and Melvin Goodwin are all on trial as potential suspects in this case. Please call in the first defendant. Walter Davis was, well, the boyfriend of Ramona before their tragic breakup just moments before Ramona's death. Witnesses say they heard them fighting backstage. One even said they heard him screaming. Bullshit! I should bump you off right now! Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. Mr. Davis, you are a suspect in the involvement of the first-degree murder of Ramona McMillan. How do you plead? Not guilty. Witnesses say you were heard fighting with Ramona the night of her death, which led to a breakup. Is this true? Yeah. Would you care to take us through what exactly happened the night of November 15th? Those dumb doors that overheard us, they don't even know the full story. Hello, Walter. Can you come in here for a second? Hey, baby. What's up? You know that we're pretty tight on money right now, and I can't make enough to take care of the both of us. These speakeasy gigs only pay so much. I think you're gonna have to go get a job. What do you mean? I'm contributing just as much as you are. Oh yes, from pickpocketing and finding one dollar scraps on the street. You know you can't do this forever. Who says I can't? Been doing it for years now and I ain't got caught. Haven't ended up in the big house yet. Okay, look, this relationship isn't gonna work out if you keep acting like a dewdropper. I have a reputation to uphold and I can't be involved in your shenanigans. Are you breaking up with me? Yes, if you can't change your habits. Bullshit! Oh, I should bump you off right now. I need a butt. Now, I'm giving you three seconds to piss off before I cool you. Uh oh. One, two, <sighs> see you on stage in five, Mel. Yep. Do you see what I mean now? She is the most aggravating person I have ever met on planet Earth. I don't know. She seems very sweet. <laughs> That's what she wants you to think. She pretends she's your best friend through good and bad. And then one day, poof, she ditches you for some solo speakeasy gig. All right. But if you're going to poison her drink, better do it now before she comes back. <sighs> She's going to get what she deserves. <clears throat> I'm going to leave forever. Set your world on fire 
fire happened so you are accusing melvin goodwin of poisoning ramona mcmillan's drink i'm just telling you what i saw and why of all reasons would mr goodwin attempt to poison miss mcmillan from what i can remember ramona told me that her and the bimbo used to be duet partners back in the day the audience loved ramona so when she got this gig they only wanted her and not on melvin but kept it around to be her pianist now wouldn't you think that that kind of resentment is a stronger motive for murder than the breakup of a relationship that only lasted four months? But just to be clear, you did threaten to bump off Miss McMillan? When you're all fired up like that, you say things out of anger that you clearly don't mean. You're missing the point! Melvin's anger towards Ramona was real. It was strong. Strong enough to want her dead. Very well. Bring in our next suspect, Melvin Goodwin. Uh, that is my job. Bring in our next suspect, Melvin Goodwin. Melvin, Melvin, Melvin. Never in the spotlight. Always overshadowed by his co-star, Ramona. He just couldn't quite climb his way to the top or beat out his competition. So instead, it seems he got rid of them. Melvin Goodwin, you're here today as a result of the accident. Yeah, yeah, I know why I'm here. You think I killed that overrated, backstabbing, disloyal, dumb Dora who never gave me my chance in the spotlight because she just happened to collapse on stage and make everything about her again. Well, I did it. Clearly. Then why has Mr. Davis made claims that he saw you tamper with Miss McMillan's drink moments before her collapse on stage? That blotto? He's trying to blame me for this? I'm pretty sure he hasn't been sober since he was 14. You can't trust a word he says. Mr. Goodwin, if you're so innocent, what were you doing to Ramona's drink then? Here's what really happened. Hey, Ramona. Oh, hello, Mel. Look, I love performing with you, and it's great, but I can't help but feel like you're always casting a shadow over me. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that, Melvin. How about this? Tonight, I can give you a few minutes of solo time after our opening act. Really? You do that for little old me? Oh, of course. Now, I'm going to start on my warm-ups, and I have to talk to Walter before the show. Okay, see you out there. Are you breaking up with me? Yes, if you can't change your habits. Bullshit! <laughs> See you on stage in five, Mel. Yep, I put the herbs in your drink for your voice. Oh, you're such a doll. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> And then the fire happened. So let me get this straight. Now there is a weapon involved. There has been no mention so far of anyone witnessing this. Then perhaps you ought to examine the body more closely. Well, the remains. I suppose this case may require further investigation. Hey, who's the detective here? Clearly not you, considering you didn't notice stab wounds on a body. Why, you little... Order, order, order. There is no evidence that Miss McMillan was stabbed. However, if what Mr. Goodwin is saying is true, 
I think it would be best if we look into Gloria Weston's role the night of the fire. Fine, bring her in. Reminder, detective, that you are the detective and I am the judge. Therefore, I will be the judge over whoever we bring in. Bring in Gloria Weston. Ah, Gloria Weston, Ramona's rival, her competition, the one who was just never good enough. Ramona was always beating her out for gigs and being the fan favorite. After being replaced with Ramona at the Moonshine Cafe, well, that was the last straw. Gloria Weston, you're here today as a suspect in the case of Ramona McMillan. Yes, Your Honor. I'm aware. Mr. Goodwin claims he saw you stab Miss McMillan on stage. No witness claims were made the same accusation, so we're not following the claim too seriously. Oh my god! That bimbo, as if I would stab someone. Oh, the blood would have been everywhere. And these expensive clothes, I wouldn't dare want to ruin them. But that bitch had it coming, though. Always stealing my jobs. Stealing your jobs? Please, this is Ramona McMillan we're talking about here. Only the best singer in the country. <coughs> Please stay on topic, Judge. Yeah. Please, tell your story, Miss Weston. Ugh, I can't believe this. She booked the gig again. Ugh, she's not even that good. Gloria, come on. She's really good. Maybe even better than you. Oh, you know what? I'm putting a stop to this right now. These people simply have no taste in music. Um, don't mind them, Gloria. Come on, let's just go get some drinks and have some fun while we're here. Very well. These amateurs don't know what they're talking about. Look at her. She thinks she's so perfect. Well, let's see what people think when I tell everyone who Ramona McMillan really is. I'm not so sure that's the best idea, Gloria. Hey, hey, this, this bitch, she's a phony. I'm the real looker, me, Gloria, not this bim. I'm the real talent, come on, you guys. I'm gonna live forever, forever, I know, what's the word, oh, forever, for, oh, what is the word, I'll set your world on fire, and watch it all crumble away, away. yeah. <laughs> Gloria, what the hell are you doing? You're just jealous. Oh. That's why you went and go and stole all my jobs. Whatever. You can have a stage. Knock yourself out. <laughs> well, I'll be damned. Hold on. So now a chandelier was the cause of Miss McMillan's death? So you were up on stage with her when she was performing? Well, yes, but I never stabbed her. The only weapon I used was my killer voice. Next thing I knew, I was being dragged off stage while the bar broke out into a fire. Oh yeah, the fire. We keep talking about this fire, but can anybody actually tell me how it started? We do have a few witnesses that could be of some help, Your Honor. Well, by all means, bring them in. Well, we can start with the owner of the Moonshine Cafe. Ah, uh, yes. The owner of the Moonshine Cafe, Miss Margaret Dubois. A nice enough woman if you're on her good side, but if you're not, well. Good afternoon, Miss Dubois. Hi, sugar. <clears throat> Miss Dubois, you are the owner of the Moonshine Cafe, correct? That I am. Sort of an odd thing, isn't it? What? A woman? 
being able to run her own business? Yes. Well, no, no. I... It's not such a crazy concept, actually. In fact, it's rather easy to run a business. Well, you seem to be doing rather well. Yes, yes. Quite well. Tell me, Miss Dubois, how does the owner of such a small cafe bring in so much money? Well, uh, lots of tips, darling. Sure. Well, what can you tell us about what happened the night your cafe burnt down? Not much. It was pretty quiet all night. Right. About that. What is the cafe doing staying open all night? Oh, well, you know. Right, right. Y'all wanted to hear about the night of the fire. Uh, well, you see, I was serving a customer mixing up his favorite drink. Drank, drank of coffee. When all of a sudden I heard this thump. But it was just old man McGucket. Old man McGucket? He's always rummaging around out back. I usually throw him a nickel to get rid of the possums. Okay. Oh, back to Ramona. How did you see her die that night? Oh, I, I didn't. Huh? Uh-huh. Ramona McMillan left my establishment alive, looking busier than a cat on a hot tin roof. Really? Well, everybody else here has been witness to Miss McMillan's death. Do you know of anybody who can support your statement? Well, you could ask old McGucket. He's always out back in the alley. Why don't you ask him? Very well. Bring Very him well. Bring him in. Old man McGucket, a real interesting guy. Some know him as the town crazy, while others think of him as the wise elder, and that he's lived in this town longer than anyone. Either way, you never really know whether the tales he tells are true or not. Whoa, -ho -ho! whoa, a nice courtroom y'all got here. Whoa. It's got, it's got a real judge and everything. Say, may I please bang your gavel? No. Ah, dang. Well, you, you know, my late uncle, he was a judge. Yeah, in, in Wisconsin. I remember he was real good, too. He locked up Jack the Ripper. Not, not the lesser known case of Jack the Ripper that everyone talks about. That was an unidentified serial killer in the largely impoverished areas around the Whitechapel District of London. Now, this Jack the Ripper was far worse. He'd go around to neighborhoods and schools, and he'd, he'd, he'd well... Let her rip. Sick bastard. Ahem. McGucket, you claim to have been at the Moonshine Cafe the night of the fire? That I sure was. I was, um, I was outside in the alley rummaging for some uh, treasure. It was pretty darn cold that night, too. I had a sweater vest on and everything. You know, it's technically not stealing if the object was lost in the first place. Arnold clearly didn't want nothing to do with it. I'm simply using my resources. McGucket! <sighs> the fire. What happened with the fire? Ah, uh, the fire. Well, I was just getting to that, you see. Well, I, I was in that cold, dark alley, and I was looking around, and I realized it kind of reminded me of my, my, my time in the war, actually, which- Which I'm sure is a fascinating story, McGucket, but please focus on the origin of what happened at the Moonshine Cafe on November 15th. Ah, uh, the fire, yeah, I, I was just getting to that, you see. And I actually, I, I wrote a little poem about it, you see. Um, <clears throat> uh, it, it was a quarter to nine. I was outside the moonshine. I was diving through the trash trying to find some precious goods. And for a second, I stared. I was a bit unprepared. See, this dame has stolen my last bit of booze. She looked unpleasant to me. She smoked a whole lot, you see. And she was pouring my drink onto the floor. My eyes stared aghast. I thought she's awfully mad. She was crazy like my half-cousin Brad. Brad lives in Utah. He, he thinks he's a bit of a seesaw, but I, I'm getting off topic. Sorry, I'm getting off topic. The, the girl threw away her final cigarette, yay, and proceeded to light up all of the booze. Next second I knew, the building lit up, and the flames continued burning down the place. It felt just like the war. I felt I was done for. And then I remembered I was perfectly all right. And that's how it went that day. I ain't got nothing left to say. So, you're claiming that you saw a woman pour alcohol in the doorway and then flick a cigarette starting the fire before leaving in a car? 
Well, if y'all really want to dumb it down, but yeah, don't let them. Dora took my last bottle of Jack Daniels and poured it out the stoop. Makakit, you are aware we are in a prohibition. The hell are you talking about planetarium? I ain't seen no stars. Prohibition. The law forbidding the sale or manufacture of alcoholic liquids for use as beverages. Well, what dumbass came up with that idea? What absolute dumbass came up with that idea? Unbelievable. Absolutely enough. Mr. McGucket, where did you get your alcohol? What? The Moonshine Cafe, of course. You mean to say the Moonshine Cafe was never really a cafe? Huh, no shit, Sherlock. Why the hell do you think everyone kept calling it the Moonshine Cafe in the first place? Wait, what? You're telling me it was a speakeasy? McGucket, I swear you hush your mouth right now. Order! Detective, I suggest we take on one case at a time here. That's okay, Judge, because I have a theory. McGucket claimed he saw a woman leave the establishment and burn it to the ground with a cigarette. This woman was clearly Miss Dubois over there, seeking to collect insurance money. Bullshit! You calling me a liar? <laughs> well, she sure ain't calling you a truther. It is my cafe. Don't you think I know what goes on there? You mean your speakeasy? Clearly not if you don't even know the damn place burnt down. How dare you? No! How dare you for hiring Ramona, that bitch, instead of me? <laughs> oh, please. This isn't about you. You're horrible anyway. Order! What? No. Well, I'm not even going to be able to do that. I'm not even going to be able to do that. I'm not even going to be able to do that. I'm not even going to be able to do that. It was, it was me. I, I, I'm the one who started that. That possum smuggling ring. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh my, well, slap my ass and call me Sally. Ramona? 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 Oh my god, you're still alive? I can't believe it. I'm actually in the presence of the real Ramona. You're supposed to be dead. Yeah, no shit I am. That's what I wanted you all to think, not what actually happened. What do you mean what you wanted us all to think? Well, you see, everything that happened that night was no accident. It was all very intentional, starting with your mismatched stories. I'm sure all of you remember having a drink or two that night. Ah, hell yeah, we do. Well, you see, that was a very special drink. Well, that contained a little something I like to call psilocybin. Have you heard of it? A hallucinogenic, hence the different stories. You see, I couldn't have anyone really knowing what happened. Yes, Walter and I did break up. Yes, Melvin and I talked about his precious feelings, and yes, Gloria did come on stage and, um, sing. But <laughs> I never died. <laughs> I didn't collapse, I wasn't stabbed, and a chandelier certainly didn't fall on me. And then I needed a way out of the building without being noticed, so what better than a little fire? I, I knew it! I, I, I done told y'all! I knew it! Well, why did you think burning down my... Cafe was a good idea. No, well, relax, you can afford it. But Ramona, why? How could you abandon me like that? Abandon <sighs> all of us. I needed a long deserved break from the spotlight. Even celebrities like me get tired of all the pap and cameras. A new, quiet little life just by myself. I spent a nice little while in Naruba. Well, then why did you come back? I would have gladly taken some of that spotlight away from you. Oh, well, that was just the thing. I missed the spotlight. I missed performing. Besides, I couldn't make it on my own. I lost all my money in a horse race, which was rigged. But anyway, I knew I wouldn't be able to support myself much longer having lost all that money. So once I heard there was going to be this big court case, I knew I had to make an appearance. The perfect opportunity to announce my return to the spotlight. 
I've always had an itch for the dramatic flair. Well, you know, you're still getting arrested, right? Uh, what? <laughs> um, counts of arson, conspiracy, fraudulently collecting life insurance money, evading taxes, forging a death certificate, delinquency on loan payments, distribution of harmful substances. Oh, rats. Ramona, you were my idol. How could you do this to me, to all your fans? <laughs> Take her away. Uh, oh, uh, get my good side. Put me on the front page. You know, Ramona, my, my father's uncle's fourth cousin twice removed, he was on the front page of some fancy article once. He was a nice fellow too. Too bad he was arrested for something, something about tax fraud. First degree murder, something like what? that. Not gonna lie, his mugshot made him look pretty attractive though. Good thing he's locked away in the prison down the street. Otherwise, my pretty face wouldn't be looking so goddamn good. Wait, so who was the body they found? The end. That was really good. Oh, nice. Thanks. Very nice.